Oh, hi. It's time for our review of the Galaxy Gear, Samsung's new smartwatch, and you too can start ignoring people you're sitting with at the table just like me. And this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're going to look at the Galaxy Gear now. Well, I finally get to be a hand model for real, and sorry about the cat scratch here. Our cat is still crazy, even after six years. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch that you know has been on the market for a couple of weeks now. We're finally getting around to reviewing it. And it's sitting here next to our lovely Galaxy Note 3 smartphone because this is really an accessory or an extension for your Galaxy Note 3 or your Samsung Galaxy S4. Those are the two compatible phones right now. And, you know, it can almost make sense. The Galaxy Note 3 is a really big phone. That's why it's called a phablet. You might not always want to pick this up, put it to your head, have a conversation, yank it out of your pocket. So why not have a little small buddy? And that's the watch. Watch is available in several different colors. you got a metal face here and a nice kind of hypoallergenic band. But it's a big thing, isn't it, though? It's, this is not exactly a delicate accessory for a woman here. And even for some of you guys with smaller wrists, you're going to feel it. If it conks against your wrist, it's going to hurt if you have a bony wrist like I do. Now, I'm almost six feet tall, so I'm not that petite. And it still looks pretty darn ample, shall we say, in my wrist. As you notice, it turns on occasionally when you lift your arm up. It turns on, so, you know, the act of basically lifting the watch up to look at it and stare at it, put it near your face, is going to wake up the screen to save some power on it. Otherwise, it's going to go off, the backlighting is going to go off, and then completely turn off, so it's going to be doing nothing most of the time. Hopefully, anyway, because the more you wake it up, the more you fuss with it, the more battery it's going to consume. Samsung says that you should charge this guy every night. Let me jump to the punch in case you're wondering. This is not going to be the world's most positive review here. And there's problem number one. We have enough things we have to charge every single day. When it comes to your watch, my God, now you've got to charge that too. The good news is if you don't use it a whole lot, it actually will go two days, I've noticed, on a charge. Of course, the bad news is you're not using your fancy $300 watch much. Hmm. So not much of a consolation there, but if you just pick it up, look at the time, futz with an app every once in a while, it really probably will go longer than a day. It's got a mighty looking clasp here, but it's actually not too hard to put on and take off. You actually push here, not on the clasp, when you want to clip it on. You just pop it open, pretty much like your standard spring-loaded watch band, particularly you see those more on men's watches. And it is adjustable, so you can move it along some rubber holes that are inside of here. A little bit hard to see. It's not the most flexible thing, so it's hard to show you those holes. But there's actually one smaller setting than this. so. It, those of you with smaller hands, probably women, will probably be able to wear it. So I said it's available in a couple of different colors. You got zingy orange, you have stayed black, and this little cyclops staring at you right here is the 1.9 megapixel camera, which actually takes okay shots. And it can zing those photos over to your phone automatically because looking at them on a 1.63 inch touchscreen is a minimal excitement after a while. The, the bad thing about this is, and by the way, which, regardless of which hand you wear it on, it, it, it's going to be conveniently located facing kind of out and away from you, is you're going to creep people out. This is sort of like the Google Glass phenomenon, and people are already paranoid enough if you're in the gym or in a locker room and somebody's got their smartphone out, oh my God, are they taking pictures of you or shooting a video? This will probably induce even more paranoia, and I wouldn't be surprised if these kind of watches with embedded cameras are banned in government places and other places where security is an issue. At any rate, it, you know, if you don't mind aiming your wrist at things to take a picture, it kind of works. You feel like Maxwell's smart, especially when you're done doing that and then you talk to the to watch. This is basically sort of like a Bluetooth headset, only much less private. It connects to your smartphone via Bluetooth. You're first going to pair it by putting it on the charging cradle, taking the charging cradle and just putting it against the back of your phone via NFC. They're going to exchange a little bit of data, and then there's going to be a Bluetooth connection. That's how they talk. So yes, you can actually have phone conversations with this. It has a speaker that's fairly loud, and it has a microphone. Microphone is adequate for calls, actually, and it does pretty decently for S-Voice, but if you're using it for other applications, like there's actually an Evernote app, companion app for this guy here, and if you do voice notes, you really fairly have to scream at it. But anyway, the neat thing is you don't have to take your big old Galaxy Note 3 out of your purse or your pocket or your Galaxy S4, you can have a conversation with your watch. The bad thing is you're having a conversation with your watch. You're holding this thing kind of up at you. It has pretty good distance, so you don't really have to bring it all the way up to your face and really look like Maxwell Smarter James Bond, but 
you're going to be having a loudspeaker call in a public place. That means whoever you're calling is going to hear the noise in the background. Whoever's around you are going to hear everything your caller says. So in the end, is that so ideal? Probably not. It's pretty darn nifty at first, and then because of those privacy and politeness concerns, it can be a little bit less. Speaking of politeness, you know, it's bad enough when people pull out their smartphones when they're sitting at the dinner table with you or in a meeting and they stare at the phone instead of at you. And, well, why it's worse, because the universal symbol of, okay, I'm getting bored, uh, what time is it, is to stop and look at your watch, right? So here it is, you're going to be staring at your watch now, not just to see the time and weather, which is your basic default screen, but we have things like notifications here. It's going to tell me missed calls. It can tell you, tell you about some emails. Uh, I'm having trouble getting it to show me Gmail. I don't think it does that. But there's all sorts of apps here. You can look at little pictures that you've taken. You've got media controller, so you can control the playback on your phone. Pedometer. More applications. So you're going to be having conversations with folks and staring at your watch all the time. Not so awesome, probably. The nice thing is you didn't have to take your phone out. The bad thing is there's a limited amount of stuff you can do here. You have access to your contacts right here, so that's really mostly making it easier for calling. We have Find My Device. That certainly makes sense. You can find your smartphone or this if they get lost. But here's, for example, the Evernote app. And we'll talk about the apps that you can add in detail in a minute. The most useful thing is probably the audio note. You just tap that and it starts recording it instantly and sent over to your phone. The bad news is it's very quiet, and we'll test that out right now. We're testing a note in Evernote. I'm speaking very loudly and very clearly. And it says no created, and in a minute it's going to be sent over to my phone. So. While well, we've done that, let's take a look at some notes that I have in Evernote. Now I keep track of mostly geeky things. It's all going to look, show me the things I've opened very recently on my phone. It's not going to show me the 60 or so notes I happen to have in this notebook. That's not so great. And if we look at it, now this note probably has 10,000 words in it, but this is all I'm going to get to see of it. So it's of minimal use, actually, in that respect. I think that something like the voice recording and the, the photos sending to Evernote are going to be the most useful thing there. And now we're in Evernote on our Galaxy Note 3 that's paired with the smartwatch, and we can listen to that note. Yeah, you can barely hear it. And the phone volume is set pretty high. I got about three quarters volume right there. And obviously I was speaking pretty loudly. So it's going to depend to a certain extent on the application. Obviously the microphone is pretty good because, like I said, S-Voice works on this. And if you're having a phone call, people can hear you just fine, even in a noisy place. Speaking of S-Voice, let's check that out. You can either scroll through all the applications, or you can double tap, set it to turn on S-Voice that way. Check weather. Now, that's pretty odd. Obviously, it heard me. That's the good part right there. But the, the funny thing is that it is configured on my Galaxy Note 3. And we're going to take a look at that again so you can see the companion Galaxy Gear application that you must install if you want to use your watch. And that's called Gear Manager. And when you install this, you'll have to agree to a bunch of end user license agreements. It seems a little bit scary. And every time it updates, it makes me do that again, too. And occasionally, it's told me I had to restore my watch after getting updates to Gear Manager. But that takes a short period of time. That's good. Uh, apps and things are transferred over Bluetooth 4.0. Usually it's quick, but when I've thrown apps onto the watch, really they're companions for notes that are always on this, uh, because this is the brains of the operation here. This is the one that's transferring data. It has the cellular radio. Your watch does not. Sometimes those can take up to four minutes just for a small app. But anyway, settings right here. And you can see Smart Relay. So if I do something on the watch, like take a look at an alert, and it can actually open that up on the phone so that... I want to carry over and start by looking at something on my watch and say, that's important, and pick up the phone to follow through. It can do that. You set wake up gesture to wake up the watch. Double press power key settings to start S-Voice like we did. And if we look at my app, we've got a list of all the apps that are on the watch and set several of them that I've put there. And so weather is actually set up. Oops, tap here there. So it knows the location using current location. So I'm not sure that isn't working. And you can set your preferences for all of these different things. Here we've got a pedometer on board that's handy for you. Exercise types. We've got gallery over here so it can automatically send photos, like I said, if you've taken with a watch over to your phone. 
dialer preferences, and we'll look at that in a minute, and some third-party applications I've installed, like Cam Dictionary. That's an interesting translation dictionary, and what it does is it uses the camera on the watch so you can shoot some text that you want to have translated, and it's going to basically send that over to the phone, and the phone's going to use a companion application. So like I said, this is really the one that's doing everything here, and it's going to look up stuff for you. So we have had to install Cam Dictionary over here to get it to input. So really, you could have just used the camera on your phone and done the same thing. It's just avoiding taking the camera out. Again, all your apps, main apps, are going to be on here, like the Evernote, the Cam Dictionary, all that kind of thing, even the weather, are on your phone. This is just a satellite window to the world of your phone. So unlike, if you remember, Microsoft's smartwatch from several years ago, the Spot Watch, that actually had a little data radio inside of it that pulled data. This guy is only pulling data from your phone. So your weather and all that kind of stuff, it's coming from your phone. Now to use this, it's all swipe-based gestures. And the little, this little 1.63-inch Super AMOLED display even supports pinch zooming, which is pretty darn amazing. This is your default screen. If you swipe down, you go back. We can't really go back now because we're in the home screen. If you swipe up just from this main screen right here, you can get... To to the dialer. So you can dial your phone using your watch and you can have the conversation on the watch if you like to do so. To get rid of that you just swipe down. To get back and forth through all applications you just do that. You got your call logs, you've got all apps, you've got various settings, the pedometer, the media controller which is a pretty neat idea. Here's gallery, we got baby gallery on here. And these were taken with the watch. They're actually not too bad. This was taken at night which is not an easy shot to do. And See we can even do things like pinch zooming. An indoor shot of some monitors. That can be pretty tricky. You know, that's a pretty darn good camera, really, for 1.9 megapixel in favor of our friend the gear. And these are all shot over to the phone as well. So here on my phone, you see I have a new category called Galaxy Gear. And we've got photos taken with Galaxy Gear there. So we can see what they look like on a bigger screen. Because, of course, everything looks good on a teeny screen. Still not bad looking, really. Inside, the Galaxy Gear is running a customized version of Android, and it weighs 2.6 ounces, so it's not too heavy. I know it looks probably pretty heavy to you, but that, that's not a bad way. There's certainly a lot of men's watches weigh in at that heavy. It has a 315 milliamp lithium-ion battery that's obviously sealed inside. It comes with a little charging pod that wraps right around the back of it. Pretty easy to put it on there and charge it, and like I mentioned, the NFC pairing decal really is embedded inside of the charging pot, not of the phone itself. All communication does happen via Bluetooth between these two guys. Camera can record 720p video on this little fella. The watch actually has 4 gigs of storage, which is kind of amazing if you think about it, and 512 megs of RAM, which I'm sure is plenty enough for what this does. Now, in terms of third-party apps, most of them are going to be through the Samsung store. You know they have their own app store and that brings us back to our little gear application here. Say you want to find some new applications. Head over to Samsung apps right here and then here's the categories. More clock faces. You can choose several different clock faces. Heavy on the analog clock faces interestingly enough. Several of the utilities are actually more clock faces. We've got Golf Navi here. We've got Evernote, which I showed you. Now, entertainment's not going to be too hot and heavy a hitter because that is a teeny screen, so you've got radio on. You've got Zite. A couple little applications like that. Health and fitness and lifestyle will probably become popular ones. Social networking right now is a little slim. You've got Samsung's chat-on solution, and you can have the companion app for that on your phone if you want to see messages that way. We've got eBay for the Galaxy Gear. Again, that's great if you just want to be staring at your watch all the time and looking to see how much that thing has gone up to in bidding. TripIt. Not a lot of apps yet. I'm sure probably we'll see some more. Depends on how well this product actually takes off. And that's an interesting thing. You know, for $100, I think a lot more people might take the plunge. But still, I'm just not sure that the value is there yet. I think Samsung's going to have to work on a couple of generations to really find the sweet spot. And here's the most dangerous thing I can do in a Samsung review to mention Apple. But I hate to say it, Apple really knows how to make lifestyle devices. Things are brain dead really easy to use and do things that you thought, gee, I never realized I needed that. We need to see a little bit more of that from our Gear Watch before I get really excited right now. 
it, it takes time to transfer the apps over. Sometimes I get error messages like you saw, like you can't pick up the location from the phone to figure out what weather to show me. All sorts of little growing pains like that and no real strong use case other than the fact it's pretty geeky cool at first because, well, it does all these nifty things without having to take out your phone. We need to see stuff that's just really easy, flawless, and a couple of things that you say, well, wow, that really is better than just taking my phone out of the pocket. And, you know, I'm not a software and hardware designer, so I can't say that I have the brilliant ideas about what those things should be, but hopefully Samsung, Apple, Microsoft, somebody will come up with some of those things so that we have something that is more than just a $300 accessory for your phone. For those of you who really want me to love this guy, I'm really sorry. Like I said, maybe in a couple of generations, but right now, it's just not there unless you really have $300 to spend and you're a real gadget freak and you like to try new tech. Then it's certainly it's pretty fun. It's pretty nifty. Uh, for the first week, you'll probably be in love with it. But after that, that's what I'd like to see what happens. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Gear. Clearly not a good watch for your social life. Uh, you know, if you're a woman like me, even if you're a big bone woman like me, it might be a little bit big looking on your wrist, but it's an interesting accessory for your phone. The question is, do you need a $300 accessory for your phone? And does this do the things that you want? Hopefully after watching our review, you know. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.